Hey guys, Massive Beats here with some guitar stuff. Something I'd like to talk to you about a little bit. Um, and it's the Boss ME70 versus the Boss ME50. Um, and it seems like a little bit um, obvious, the comparison. There's a few years in between those two units. Uh, but there's something that I discovered uh, that may want you uh, reconsider the whole matter and I'll tell you in a little bit but first uh, let's just look uh, at both of these units how they're similar and what's different about them um, so in terms of size if you want to have a look um, they're fairly close fairly evenly matched I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here um, so you can see the buttons and so forth I'm gonna do that on the other unit to bear with me this is not the easiest thing to do here with these um, cameras um, there you go so one is blue one is black black and blue um, and so I played around with both of them I well first of all you asked me well why in the hell would you buy something like that that's certainly not high-end and it's not a boutique pedal uh, either or vintage and so forth and you guys like know that I like the um, you know the vintage stuff and the old-school tone when it comes to my instruments um, and then I use it with my electronic music and blend it sort of together uh, well here is the thing um, why do the, those two pedals have a place they're not the top of the line of these electronic pedals but uh, they're doing what they're doing fairly well and uh, one of the things that I absolutely love they are battery operated so um, let me uh, let me show you that really quick battery operation and you can open this thing up here and yes I'm gonna zoom in here where you go there you go yeah check this out and why is this important and why is this cool because you don't need a power supply uh, hands down very simple um, and you can take it with you put it put it you know a uh, small footprint and go to a rehearsal and you have um, you know phaser flanger uh, overdrive delay uh, all of these things you got those ready to go um, uh, just like compressor um, noise reduction reverb so you have a good amount of um, of, of sound of sonic uh, versatility that allows you to plug into a guitar amp or directly into uh, a line input so this is where these pedals have uh, their their uh, raison d'être as you say in French uh, by the way this is a there's also usually a uh, volume pedal and a wah wah pedal and an expression pedal that's already built in that's one less pedal and the size is here's a let me put a classic next to it um, this is about the size here right so this is the size of these units not terribly big you can't put it in your back pocket or perhaps not in your gig bag but small enough now so what's similar about these units I said it already uh, the features are pretty similar the big difference is that this one has amp modeling so it simulates an amplifier um, and as the preamp section right here right here and you have several amps that you can choose from I'm gonna try to zoom in I'm not sure if that's visible um, so there's clean combo tweet stack lead stack and so forth and you can adjust the gain and all that is very fair and dandy and it sounds fairly good um, I used to have a, a line 6 I believe that the line 6 sounds better um, the big benefit of these two guys is uh, that everything has a dedicated knob no twiddling in big screen little screens and sub menus every effect here is almost like a pedal and I really really like that and that's why I wanted it I'm not gonna do my recordings with it um, if I want to do some sort of uh, you know virtual guitar amps then I'm gonna use it uh, in my DAW I'm gonna use I don't know waves GTR or native instruments guitar rig or what else not um, or I'm gonna just mic my amp and, and do it properly but uh, for practicing for checking out sounds for playing live perhaps in certain situations we don't want to haul uh, your pedals 
um, this is just perfect. Now, uh, the ME50 doesn't have that amps simulation. It has a tone modify situation where you can go from, you know, fat, presence, mild. So this is sort of like uh, an EQ, um, it's sort of like EQing things, right? So you can, let me zoom in here, you can EQ things uh, and it changes the tone a little bit, that's great. Um, I usually uh, don't use it. Um, and so you have four foot switches here, you have three foot switches there. Uh, the switches obviously are bigger on the ME50. So uh, a little bit easier to tap. Um, there's about four, there's four here. Uh, the lights are a lot brighter as well. So when you're in a dark situation, those lights are so bright. You can't see this here with the camera because we got lights shining on them. Uh, they almost blind you so you can't read by contrast on that metallic surface uh, what's going on here. The blue um, uh, of the ME50 different story. So a little bit in a live situation where you can't see that well the ME50 is better. Um, now, the preamp section um, is missing here. Here you have an EQ section, it's called Tone Modify. Here you have a preamp session, uh, section, uh, pretty uh, good. It gives you those basic tones. The wah-wah is, in my opinion, better here. It's a little bit more solid and it sounds a little bit more convincing. Um, it doesn't, this, the, the wah-wah on the uh, ME70 has more of that wah feeling, this, this vowel sound. It's a little bit too strong for me. It has this this cue, this where the filter kicks in, is a little bit too, um, it's in the lower range and then it gets amplified a little bit too much. So for, um, I guess, they, I guess they did it because of the um, uh, usability with distortion effects and so forth. I think that's where it comes in handy. It's a little bit more pronounced. But for clean tones, um, this wah wins. Now, uh, the delays are about the same. They're a little, uh, they're configured a little bit differently. Delays are the same. I like the delays. They're good. The what's called the analog delays, very good. Um, modulations are pretty good. Uh, fairly similar. The big difference is that the overdrive section here. Uh, trumps this one by far. The overdrive section here is not good um, by any means. They have one or two that are good, in my opinion. It's the RAT setting. Um, let me zoom in here. It's the RAT setting, um, and it's that's pretty good. And then you have the um, the OD1 and OD2 setting that works for me. But you have to tweak with bottom and tone. You have to reduce the tone by quite a bit, otherwise it sounds too thin. Um, so it's workable, but maybe only one or two settings. Everything else sounds a bit digital. Different story here. Um, the um, the distortion here on um, these guys sounds. Um, uh, a lot creamier on this guy sounds a lot creamier uh, pretty much every setting is acceptable it's still not you know like 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 a you know tube screamer or something like that it's not the same thing but it's usable especially when you dial in some compression um, and some delay and you have you also can go a little bit with on the preamp with the gain structure that also gives you um, um, some some distortion because you could go you know on a stack or on a rectifier or a lead stack and then increase the gain that gives you some distortion that's being modeled so um, I kind of liked it but um, you have also one more thing before I come to the punchline one more thing is you have here a, um, a 38 second 38 seconds of looping which is great I tried it out I use it's fun you can play against yourself Okay, well, as I'm almost running out of words here, so everything else is sort of like similar with a slight edge to the ME70. Of course, it's a newer unit. We're talking about two, about 2004 here and about 2009 here. So this, uh, you would automatically assume that this unit would be better in every respect. It's not, but it's better with the distortions and it's better with uh, uh, the, the preamp. Uh, it has a preamp. This one does not have. But when you want to, when you plug it into a guitar amp, the whole thing, situation changes. Uh, if you turn it off here, the preamp, so no preamp section is engaged, so you can't, can turn that off, so the signal is not virtually modified. Um, and you compare both uh, units, and I did that, I went back 20, 30 times, back and forth. Um, it's a little bit hard to reproduce on the video because you have to plug in things at the same time and then edit it and switch it back and forth. And I also plugged in a synthesizer that you see here, and then I did a wave analysis uh, to see what's going on because I had a feeling this is not 
quite right and I was right um, the ME70 sounds thinner so this is the punchline, the ME70 sounds thinner, uh, there's a little bit less bass and it sounds a bit more compressed and it sounds a bit more, mm, there also seems to be a little bit of a delay, meaning it sounds a bit softer when you play, there's a rubbery texture to it. Uh, I cannot uh, say it in any other words, but the, the, waves, the, the wave analysis showed there's a little bit less going on in the... Um, in the lower frequencies. Um, also the output here is a lot stronger, you'd have to if you set this button here to 100% the uh, output level, uh, that same level is achieved by putting the master level on the uh, ME50 at around 1 o'clock, 1.30 o'clock, so um, a little bit less than 2 o'clock. Uh, so it has a little bit more punch. So all in all, if you plug in a guitar and you go for, the, for, a, for a, um, clean sound and you plug it into your amp, this has a very raw feeling. It has that crunchiness and a raw attack, basically like plugging in a guitar that, um, um, you know, with, with, without any effects or anything, directly the guitar signal. Here you have a little bit of that, there's a little bit of smoothness going on that you don't want when you turn off the preamp. So for me this is sort of a deal breaker because when I plug into a guitar amp, I don't want to have uh, not only a sound coloration, I mean everything color colors the sound, I mean each cable, but here it's a little bit too noticeable and it also affects the playing and there seems to be some sort of compression. So if I hit very hard and soft that doesn't really translate and I like funk tones, I like that raw roots feeling. Um, so in that case for me the ME50 is the winner, I wouldn't have thought, I thought uh, the uh, ME70 would be the better unit, has more features. Um, has you know a dedicated compressor um, section um, so and you know it's five years younger and you can turn off the preamp so I thought wow all of that uh, is going to result in the ME50 ME plus uh, some something extra that tone difference matters to me. I want something, I just want an effect pedal. I don't want um, a colored sound. So with this I can go perhaps into um, an amp and uh, run it from there and, and hope that my signal is not modified by too much. Of course it is going to be modified. It runs through a digital circuitry. Um, it's 24 bits and um, I believe 44 kilohertz could be 48, correct me if, my, if I'm wrong, but that's enough. Um, these units have been in existence since the late 90s. This one was released in 2003-2004 by that time, that technology to do basic effects, it's there. Nothing has really changed. Uh, where things have changed is in the amp simulation situation, where you do virtual amping and so forth, where you need needs a lot more processing power. Um, I would probably recommend, you know, getting a Line 6 HD 500X. Get the most modern unit you can find. They go for about 500. This goes for about 300. So if you want the the, the modeling, go all out. You know, go for the best you can. Um, so a lot of talking. I hope I cramped in all my thoughts. Uh, I'm not going to edit this video much, so there's going to be some bloopers in there somewhere. Um, I hope you. It, I hope that gives you something to think about because a lot of people still use these units. A lot of people like them. A lot of pros actually use them. I was surprised when I did my research. Um, yeah. Uh, that said, um, yeah. Hope it's beneficial to you. Massive beats out. Please like and subscribe. And we'll see you soon. With um, yeah, we'll make some noise next time. This was pure talk. Ouch.